And we are going racing here at Sonoma. 55 laps, 175 miles in the USRC Cup Series. Justin Morton, the number nine, is going to lead him off. Green. <laughs> and we're green. We're letting them call it themselves. They fan out. Oh, solid two wide. Who's going to be the first one to overdrive it here? Looks like uh, we got Wee Wee looking to make some moves early here. I'm going to try to reopen ATVO. Okay, got it. You guys ever hear me referring to ATVO? It's the program that we use on the side to control the cameras. As we see them starting to bunch up. Yeah, it looks like Wee Wee's getting held up a little bit by uh, JW and uh, David just got into the back of Wee Wee. Number 23 of Jonathan Shipman coming down the S's behind the 33 JW Miller. Look at the shot here. It's gorgeous. Jonathan Shipman is here for one thing, and that's to win the race. It'll be an interesting one to watch. That's going to be one of your major passing spots right there here at Sonoma is going to be outbreaking people going into turn 11 right there. So if you watch the race today, that was, you know, you're looking at uh, turn 7 and turn 11. You know, you, ha you have 11 turns, but you only realistically have uh, two opportunities to pass. So you want to be jamming. You got fresher tires. You go on the inside and uh, going into 11, outbreak them, you know, game over. Also coming out of seven, if you get a really good run, I think it's coming off a, a left-hander possibly, but you can get him coming out and it's, I'm sorry, it's after a righty, after the right and the seven. And it, it looks like, you know, JW is uh, he's kind of throwing uh, Wee Wee off his rhythm and uh, Wee Wee's getting a lot of wheel spin trying to like maintain JW's pace, so to speak. Yeah, it's hard to pass around here, man, especially, you know, some of these guys that are running such equal speeds. But right now, everyone's make, looking really good out here. So Justin Morton looks like Riley's starting to close up here as we're back in turn 11. As uh, Wee Wee goes for the pass inside of turn 11. Like Justin opened up a little bit Ooh, of time him we got on him. Thomas sideways on the, the start finish straight. Oh, Thomas has hit the wall. He's going to get it going again. That won't be the first or last time we see something like that. It's the number 94, Jordan Malish, is going to try to find his way around him. Wee Wee's making a big push. Uh, in the last half a lap, he's passed two cars here. Say it again, I love these views that they're giving us with these cameras, man. Oh, it's 42 of Ryan Nichols almost lost it, getting too much, <laughs> too much of the curb. Yeah, these, these curbs here really unsettle the car, and uh, you really have to be patient. And uh, as Ryan Nichols gets sideways, spins it through the, the dirt section there, blows Whoa. it up, and he'll be back under control. This is some of the hardest part right here is to get it going straight again. Too much horsepower, you're in the dirt, you got stuff in your tires. As I was saying, you have to be really patient after hitting a curb. You have to let the car suspension settle down before you can really get back to the throttle hard. It looks like Riley's making a run at Justin again. And you see Josh Powell just sticking with him. So this will be interesting to see where Riley thinks that, you know, you could possibly make a pass, but. I know uh, Riley, he, he's on a big high right now. Uh, as I was saying, you know, he had that uh, Camel Cup win 
which he literally started dead last and drove through the entire field to take the victory. Take a look at James Jacobs. That's Ford Racer 2020 on Twitch. And that Ford Fusion Eagle One ride. As I watched him uh, quite a bit in practice, and you know he wasn't breaking any world speed records, but he was just staying consistent, and that's all he can really do here. Yeah, it's all I really expect from my driver is just to stay within, you know, your your, you know, what you can do, and uh, get better every time you come out to a track like this. So hopefully, he gets it going. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The USRC we actually started. Uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, so that way by 9 o'clock we're done and everyone on the East Coast can get ready for uh, their Monday work week. But we'll have to remind you next week. Yeah, this looks like Nichols. Jacob's just going to let him go by. He's just trying to log in some laps here. Now uh, the 55 Superman Chevrolet looks like uh, just like everyone else. A little bit of damage in the front, no big deal. Yeah, th this set is so loose under throttle. It's it's really a handful for everybody here. All right, we're on lap 14. End of the stage. This one's going to be all Justin Morton's. He's uh, 6.8 seconds ahead of Powell. Nine seconds ahead of Wee Wee. Ten seconds ahead of Riley. And, geez, 23 seconds ahead, ahead of David, so... Okay. And and gotcha. I think I was looking at the wrong one. Justin Morton looks like he's coming into the pits. <laughs> he's going to come into the pits as we don't have a rule stopping him from doing that right before the end of the stage. There's no closed pits here. No closed pits, so he's going to come out back in front. So the stage one winner is going to be Josh Powell <laughs> because, uh, yeah, because Justin decided to come in. So with uh, Justin's decision to, to make that stop, it pretty much guaranteed him, you know, the, that start, that lead start position because he's knowing everybody else is going to go into the pits and it's going to send them back up to the front. That way he doesn't have to worry about passing any traffic. He doesn't have to worry about a race off a of pit road, a bobble in pit road. He can just do a smooth stop on his own and be guaranteed, you know, the, the start here. Yeah, now we got Josh Powell up here, you know, in the in the you know, top top four positions up in the top four. Let's see what he's got here tonight. And he took that turn really wide from the get go. Justin gets going. I was going to try to stick with him. See if you can pass early and try to make someone pass you back later. It, it wouldn't surprise me to see, uh, you know, Josh Powell have a go at uh, Justin Martin here. He's, he's got a lot of experience on this sim. And these top three are grouped together. Then we have the 24 and 33 close behind all it takes is one mess up and Riley's gonna duck down try to take power right there Let's see what happens here and as they go through the S's side by side not ideal who's gonna give nobody's gonna give that's a fantastic shot through the S's the 420 is gonna keep the position Holding off the 56 of Riley Thompson. Oh, Riley got loose. We're going into turn 11. Not going to have enough to outbreak him, but that brings everybody a whole lot closer together. Oh, Superman. I don't. Who did that to him? James Jacobs. He, he's doing really well lately, you know? He's just really. He, he's going into these races. He, he's definitely outgunned by a lot of these guys, so he's just going at these races with uh, consistency. And uh, 
he's been getting some pretty good results lately. Now let's see how the 23 and the 42 are going to run this out. In that, in that first segment, the 23 was a little bit faster than the 42, but he had a tough time getting around. I have a feeling this is going to be an interesting little battle here. Nice and woed up. Now we have Justin Morton followed by Riley Thompson, Frank DiMaggio, David Life, and JW Miller, your top five here. As we're on lap 27. See if Justin has any funny ideas about going in the pits this time. And, uh, you know, really where he also gains that advantage is uh, the t you have to wait for the 10th place car, which in this situation, how far is he ahead of the 10th place car? Uh, they are like 35 seconds. Quite a ways. <laughs> yeah, 35 seconds. He can come in, get Fritz tires, go out before the caution probably even gets called. I think... Uh my question is, you know, not so much if Justin does it, but if Justin does it, will Riley know enough to follow this time? Yeah. And Ryan are battling. Oh, and Riley comes in the pits and he hit the wall a little bit. So now both the leaders are coming to the pits, Dave. So that answers your question. Yes, he will. <laughs> and that's going to allow Frank DiMaggio to inherit the lead. And he's going to end up with the stage win here. This pace car is going to lead him down to turn 11, and we're going to be green again till the end. David Life is looking pretty antsy here behind Justin. He looks like he's ready to go. Time to send it. Let's end the day strong here at Sonoma. And he is off, and Riley's going to see if he can keep with him here. Oh! Wow, David got real loose. Maybe a little contact kept it together. And he's still he's, Riley did oh. not want to give up that inside. And there goes David on the outside. Oops, as we got a couple cars getting into each other at the oh. mid pack here. Looks like oh that's oh that's the forty two. Alright, well good thing that they Oh the twenty four almost booted the fifty six. Then here comes Josh Powell. And that's exactly what Justin wanted to see. And the last thing that Riley needed. Because now he has some breathing room. He should be able to set sail. But now the 420 is all over the 28. Yep, you got to make your moves now, man. Yeah, definitely why the tires are the freshest. Yeah. Because, you know, as this thing goes on, it, the car is just going to be more of a handful. Yeah, and I think, yeah, 22 laps, Duke, and I think uh, Riley put it the best. Is That was the longest run that they've gone on so far. So now you're going to be doing an even longer run. So you got to make the passes, maintain the tires, and stay on the track. What the heck? You know, he's cotton up a little bit, but that initial jump that the leader always gets on being able to control the starts here in the USRC Cup Series makes it so difficult because, you know, they pull this gap from the get-go, you know, and now you have to try to get it back. I, I really think Riley did the right thing by uh, fighting David off, you know, to fight him tooth and nail and keep that position. That that was a smart play on, on Riley's uh, part there. So we'll see what he sees. So he goes through the S's. When you're watching it, it looks so fast. When you're in the cockpit, it seems so slow. Just getting a good line here. He's really got to let off. Trying to let the car settle. Going into turn 11, like we said before, is where you need to outbreak people to make the pass. And look, he's all the way down in first, just coasting forever before he can hit the throttle. Yeah, now you he really, really got to be patient. 
There should be a whole reality show. Ooh, oh, my J-W, goodness. JW goes off here. What happened to Jordan? Jordan took off half his car somewhere. It's a whole lot lighter now. That should be good. He's got an SK modified out there. All right, as we're about to be done with lap 51 of 55 here at Sonoma, Justin Morton, now he's four and a half seconds in front of Riley. All right, we officially have one lap to go here in the USRC Cup Series. Justin Morton has dominated the race. And as long as he stays on track, he's looking to get himself a win here at, at Sonoma. At this point, we only have eight cars left on the lead lap. <laughs> but this one, this one's good to see. It's one of those races a guy like him marks down on his calendar. And they came here and did everything they meant to do. As Justin Morton's going to dominate here in the USRC Cup Series here in Sonoma. Yeah, that was a well done race. He was fast, he was smooth, he was consistent. And at the end of the day, he's the winner here at Sonoma. As he's going to light him up for the fans. Definitely had that, uh, that ultimate pitch strategy there as well. Yeah, as Riley Thompson pays his respects. Riley was fast, but not fast enough today.